Welcome to Big Data Management 10.2.1. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate complex types structs. Big Data Management supports various complex types such as array structs and maps. These are supported across various file formats such as Avro, Parquet, JSON, and across various storage systems such as HDFS, Amazon S3, and Blob. What is a struct? A struct is a composite data type that can have several elements within it. These elements can be primitive data types such as integers and strings or can be of other complex types. Nesting is permitted in structs. When interacting with structs, you would more often interact with the type definition libraries. Type definition library allows you to organize your structs and interact with them in a much easy to use fashion. There are also several transformation language functions that allow you to build the structures, rename them, and so on. There are also many gestures in the interface that help you interact with these structures. For example, the create struct port would allow you to select a bunch of ports in a given transformation and create a struct out of it. Extract from complex ports would allow you to extract elements from inside a complex port. And then similarly, flatten would allow you to flatten the entire complex type. I'm going to demonstrate some of these gestures today in my video. Let's get to your live demo. This is the Big Data Management Developer Interface. I already have several data objects imported in here to help me with this demonstration today. I'm going to bring in one such data object called orders. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build a struct out of this some of these columns that are available inside the orders. For example, I want to select customer key. I want to select the order status and total price and create a struct out of them. So all I would do is right click, go to hierarchical conversions and then do create struct boot. Let me give the name of the struct as struct underscore orders and then just click finish. That's it, a struct port is created for me. You can see that there is a new expression that's got added and inside that expression, a new port of type struct is added. Because I selected the columns that I need, it also created a type configuration for me called struct underscore orders. And you can see here that there's also code automatically written for me using the struct as function, which is receiving the struct underscore orders as its input. And then the corresponding values coming from my input that should be mapped into the struct orders. So what this expression is trying to do is it's trying to map these three elements into the elements inside the struct. All right, so where is the struct created? Let's take a look. The type definition library. When you created a struct, you can see all the structs that you created as part of this mapping interface in the type definition library. So this is the struct orders that you created, which has three, these three ports. And as part of the struct as function, we're passing these three input ports and assigning them to the struct's ports. It is as simple as that. And now once I have a struct, or once I have uh, you know all the data model that I need, I can use the create target functionality to create a complex type or complex file, for example, and then write the struct to an output file. Let me demonstrate how simple that is. I'm gonna choose a complex file and let's say I want to create an Avro file. So I'm going to call it as Avro struct of orders. I'm going to leave the resource format as Avro of default and then click finish. That's it. Now, a target is created for me, which has all the columns coming from my input. And then the struct is automatically mapped to this particular column in my target. Now I could just go and run this mapping. See, it is very easy to create a struct. Now, how easy is it to extract elements out of a struct? Let me demonstrate that too. See, we already have a struct here. Let's say I want to grab some elements inside a struct. All I have to do is right click, hierarchical conversions, and then extract from complex port. You can see that all the columns or elements inside a struct are displayed here for me. Let's say I only want to pick two columns from here, customer key and auto status. I would select them and then I would just click finish. A new expression transformation is automatically created for me. 
and the two puts that I needed are automatically extracted for me. Let's take a look at the code. When I go to the puts tab, you can see that it's using the dot operator that we introduced, which is nothing but struct name dot the column name inside the struct that we want to extract. That's it. Once you understand how this works, you can write this by yourself by creating a brand new put and then just using struct dot column name. Similarly, if you want to change it, it's very simple. You give the struct name dot and we will list all the columns available inside the struct for you. And then you just choose the column that you need and then you click OK and then you're done. That's how simple it is to create structs as well as extract elements from inside a struct. As a summary, BDM supports many complex types such as arrays, structs, and maps. These are supported across various file formats and various storage systems. There are many UI gestures available to help you interact with these complex types. Thank you for watching this video. And for more such informational videos, subscribe to our Big Data Management community site at network.informatica.com.